If you're someone who is heavily into motorsport, be it on or off-road, the chances are you're more than familiar with the notion that the type of tyres you choose for your vehicle can dramatically affect how well your vehicle behaves. And regardless of if you're just an enthusiastic spectator or someone who actively participates, you'll likely know that on road in good weather, the more sticky the tyre, the more likely you'll be able to go around a corner quickly. The muddier the terrain, the chunkier the tyre needs to be. And for inclement weather, the more effectively the tyre can push water away from its contact surface with the road, the quicker you'll be able to stop. When it comes to our daily drivers, though, people are less likely to give tyres a second thought, using whatever tyres came with their car until they're worn out and then replacing them with whatever seems to be a reasonably cost-effective option. And don't get me wrong, some people, usually folks who would traditionally be considered car fanatics, will do some serious due diligence to find tyres that are well rated for everyday street use or will pick brand names they know have a good reputation. Some may even opt for tyres with cool tread patterns or pick a wheel and tyre combination that makes their vehicle look the part. But while you would have to be completely unlucky or terribly informed to pick tyres that aren't going to work on internal combustion engine vehicles, the correct choice of tyres is far more important for an EV. So today, I'm going to guide you through the buying process, give you some tips and tricks as to what to look out for, and give you some pointers as to things you should avoid. And no, sadly, I, I don't have a warehouse full of different tyres here at the studio to play with, so I'll be sitting here on camera talking about generics rather than specifics for the most part. I'm sure that many of you watching will know that the real world range of an EV can be affected by many different factors, including the condition of the road you're driving on, how fast you're driving, what kind of traffic patterns are around you, and also the external weather and temperature. And while all of those factors impact the real world fuel economy of a diesel or a gasoline powered car, you're less likely to feel the impacts of those things on a daily basis because while there are now battery powered vehicles with the same kind of real world range as some internal combustion engine vehicles, your time to recharge is longer, even at a fast charging station, than it might be to refuel with fossil fuels. And while battery electric vehicles are by far more efficient than internal combustion engine ones, EVs convert upwards of 77% of the energy from the grid into power at the wheels, while internal combustion engine vehicles are, at best, between 12 and 30% efficient. EVs carry the equivalent of a few gallons of gasoline on board at any one time, while gasoline vehicles can carry tens or even hundreds of gallons, depending on the size of their fuel tank. This all means that if you're going to be picking tyres for your EV, you're going to want to pick ones that are as efficient as possible. But there are also some other things to bear in mind that I'm about to cover, because it's not just about efficiency, even if that's where I'm going to start. The rolling resistance of your tyre is a measurement of how much friction there is between the contact patch of the tyre and the road beneath it. The higher the rolling resistance, the more energy you'll need to send to the wheels to keep the car moving along at a set speed. The lower the rolling resistance, the less energy you'll need to keep your car moving along the road at a given speed. For an EV, lower rolling resistance tyres can dramatically improve your car's range for a charge, meaning you're more likely to get close to or exceed official range estimates. Rolling resistance of your tyres is not only affected by the tyres physical properties, such as the compound used to make it and the tread pattern, but also things like the tyre's sidewall and bead design, the tyre's load carrying capacity and how inflated it is. Another big factor in rolling resistance is the physical size of the tyre and therefore its contact area. As a rule of thumb, the larger the tyre, the larger the tyre's contact area and thus the higher the rolling resistance. This is why, for example, when you see EVs with large, wide alloy wheels get smaller range estimates than those with smaller, narrow ones. Because while the actual physical diameter of the smaller wheel plus a higher profile tyre might be fairly similar to the physical diameter of a large wheel with a low profile tyre, the overall weight and larger contact area of the larger wheel and tyre combination will sap range. 
You'll also find that the larger the wheel rim and the lower profile of the tyre, the more rough the ride generally becomes. If you want to give your EV an instant improvement to both range and comfort, going down a wheel size can often help a lot. If you're currently riding on 20 inch wheels with low profile tyres, switching to 18 inch wheels with tyres that have a taller sidewall profile should result in markedly improved ride and longer range per charge. Oh, and because there are now several different electric pickup models to choose from in many markets, be aware that traditional off-road capable knobbly tyres on an EV will result in less range than if you go for a more modest road-friendly tread pattern. My own Ford F-150 Lightning uses winter tyres from Nokian in colder months and the stock Goodyear road-friendly tyres that it came with from the factory in the summer. I've never got stuck with either tyre, apart from one time when I, I drove into a snowdrift that was nearly as tall as the front headlights and had to back out and try again. Of course, that particular hack is only something that the most determined of range chasers do and most people find that switching to lower rolling resistance tyres will improve range enough. But I should caution, lower rolling resistance tyres tend to have longer stopping distances than less energy efficient tyres because they tend to be less sticky. But in my experience, because EVs have superior braking for the most part, thanks to regenerative braking combined with friction braking, you'll usually find your stopping distances with low rolling resistance tyres are still excellent. If energy efficiency is important to you when shopping for your EV tyre, make sure you look at ratings on sites like the Tire Rack, Canadian Tire and Black Circles in the UK, to name just a few, to see which tyres come out on top for rolling resistance. And before I get to another thing to look out for, for tyres for your EV, if you live somewhere with winter weather, that can sometimes include snow, be sure to look for low rolling resistance winter tyres. They do exist, and a firm favourite of everyone at the company is Nokian. They produce excellent non studded winter tyres that can offer low rolling resistance as well as good winter performance on snow and ice. The next really important thing to bear in mind when buying an EV tyre is the actual weight rating of the tyres you're considering. It is no secret that electric vehicles are often heavier than a comparably sized internal combustion engine vehicle and not all tyres are rated to carry that extra weight, especially more budget oriented ones. If in doubt, your car's manual should detail how heavy it is and what its maximum allowable weight is, often called the GVWR or Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. You should see it listed on a little plaque or plate that's normally hidden somewhere inside the driver's side door jamb. Your tyres also have a maximum rating for maximum allowable load and for the most part you'll want your tyres to have a maximum allowable load rating that is more than one quarter of the GVWR for the vehicle you own. You should also note that the maximum allowable load is for passenger vehicles. For SUVs and pickups the load rating of a tyre is only 91% of its marked rating. Why is this important? Well, overloaded tyres are more prone to overheating and blowouts. Overloaded tyres may also be more prone to handling problems when cornering and stopping, and overloaded tyres will wear out more quickly, none of which you want. Related to this, I should probably also note that tyres on electric vehicles are usually inflated to higher pressures than they might be on an internal combustion engine vehicle. And while most tyres should be able to deal with the pressures required by an EV, again, check the maximum pressure on a sidewall of the tyre against the pressure listed on the manufacturer's door jam of your vehicle. A good tyre shop will notice things like this, but it's always better to be well informed when it comes to this. At this point, I should also point out that any time you get your tyres changed, we have a puncture repaired, you should always, and I do mean always, request a specific tyre pressure for your tyres to be inflated back up to. While it is generally considered good practice for a garage or a tyre shop to check the tyre pressures against whatever is listed on your car's door jam plate, it is all too common, unfortunately, for overworked, underpaid staff to inflate it to whatever they think it should be for your car's size and wheel specs. 
I have frankly lost track of the number of times I've had to ask a tyre shop to finish inflating my vehicle's tyres because someone at the shop inflated them to ICE vehicle specs, not EV specs. It's particularly a problem with pickup trucks like the F-150 Lightning. Let's talk about tyre wear. While softer compounds are generally better at transferring the large amounts of torque that EV motors produce onto the road and generally have better grip than harder compounds, you'll find that traditional high-performance tyres won't last long if you drive your EV particularly aggressively. I have frankly lost track of the number of higher-end Tesla and Porsche Taycan owners I've met who describe having a fairly regular, incredibly expensive tyre bill. Obviously, if you are someone who owns a slightly lower-powered EV or you're someone that doesn't have a particularly heavy right foot, this will be much less of a concern to you. But high-power, quick-accelerating EVs will chew through soft tyres if you let them. But hey, if you're more interested in grip and burning off SRT demons at the lights, then, well, you'll want the extra grip. Go ahead. Spend lots of money. Before we leave the grip and tyre compound topic, I want to mention that I've driven several different types of EV-specific or environmentally friendly tyres over the years, and while some do have pretty poor life because they're engineered for quiet running, others have great life and minimal wear, so don't assume that just because they are EV-rated, your new tyres will last a particularly long time. And just like softer performance tyres, even EV tyres can wear down quickly if you do lots of burnouts and stoplight sprints. Next, slightly related, let's look at something that's important to many EV owners, sound. While internal combustion engine cars make enough sound usually to mask any tyre noise from the road, your average EV, being a lot quieter, will make every creak from the suspension and every note from the tyre painfully obvious. And some people aren't bothered by this, especially if they don't drive very much. But if you are someone who gets irritated by a constant drone at a particular speed, be sure to check tyre ratings to see which tyres are known for making more noise than others. Generally, the harder the tyre compound, the more noise you will hear. However, if you'll remember, I mentioned earlier that higher profile tyres paired with smaller wheels tend to give a better ride and better efficiency, and they also tend to be much quieter because there's more tyre and less wheel between you and the road. And personally, as a former classical musician, I was an oboist for those who don't know, yes, that is me with an omomobo. I get fairly easily irritated by random unexplained noises, but for some reason our favourite summer tyres, the Nokian M-Tyre 2.0s, which do make a fairly noticeable noise at about 55 miles per hour, don't irritate me as much as I thought they would. It's just a noticeable background drone that I guess I, I don't mind too much, especially given that I tend to listen to an audiobook, the news or music while I'm driving, so it's usually drowned out by whatever I'm listening to anyway. And yeah, I know I have named Czech Nokian many times in this video. It is, it is not sponsored. I just like the tyres a lot. They are often more expensive than other options, but they just know their stuff really well. And multiple team members at this channel have picked to buy Nokians with their own cold, hard money for their own EVs. They're just good at winter tyres and EV tyres. Next, let's talk about the notion of manufacturer recommended and installed tyres. It is fairly common for me to encounter people who think that the tyres that came on their car from the factory are hands down the best tyres that their car should have, or indeed, that if they put different tyres on their car to the brand that they came with from the factory, their warranty will be voided. I had a garage in the UK try to tell me that once, which was, uh, which was funny. Let me be really clear. You can put whatever tyres on your car that you want to, as long as those tyres are approved for road use in the country you're in and they don't violate any safety rules, and they are the correct speed, weight, and size ratings for your vehicle. If all of that is true, you're good. 
And while in some countries you will invalidate your vehicle warranty if you put on wheels that are inappropriately sized or not designed or rated for your vehicle, again, in other countries, you're on your own if you do something silly. But while you might think that the manufacturer of your car puts specific tyres on your vehicle, they usually only put them on your vehicle because they and the tyre company came to a really good price agreement. So OEM tyres, original equipment manufacturer tyres, they're rarely made custom for your vehicle. Unless that is you happen to own a very high performance EV whose tyres were co-developed between the automaker and a tyre company. That was the case with Porsche for a while. Or you happen to own a Tesla Cybertruck, which I also understand did get completely custom tyres made exclusively for it. But frankly, even bizarre and niche market vehicles, and I'm talking vehicles like the Twike and City L, shared a common wheel size and tyre. Although, really fun fact, the City L, being a really awesome vehicle, actually has three completely different wheels that are completely non-interchangeable, even though the tyres are the same. For the most run-of-the-mill EVs though, you are more likely to find a better performing tyre for your EV that is aftermarket than sticking with the brand and type of tyre that your car came with from the factory. Which brings me to the final, final thing. Run flats and spares. Most modern EVs come from the factory without spare wheels and most come with OEM tyres that are either run flat, meaning they'll still be capable of driving without damaging the tyre or wheel at low speeds, or they have some kind of self-repair function. That's usually an inner liner of goo that's designed to seal around any punctures to prevent the tyre going completely flat. You'll often also get a can of tyre sealant, a, a fixer flat kind of affair. At a push, these can be used to get you out of an emergency, but the goo can often damage your tyre and your car's wheel, so basically they are best left as a last resort. And frankly, a smarter choice for most people is either to get breakdown membership that will come and rescue you if you do suffer a flat, or to buy a space-saving wheel. There are now companies that will sell EV-specific spare wheels that will work with your car and they can save you both money long term as well as ensure that if you do get a puncture, you can get a replacement tyre that matches whatever you have on your vehicle and you don't have to deal with goo. Oh, and if you do get a spare wheel and tyre, make sure you have some way of jacking your car up, an iron to undo the wheel nuts and make sure you know how to change it. Oh, and for goodness sake, Keep checking the tyre pressure for that spare and don't drive full speed if you're using a space saver. No matter what you see online, they are not designed for it. So there you have it. Our top tips for getting good tyres for your EV and what to look out for when buying. But have I missed something? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling right by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel every month through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Carl B. Knapp, Stoyle Pankoff, Smithers, John Strott, Kelly, Joseph Valentinetti, John Flint, and Nate Fritz. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also in the down below. This month, we're campaigning for an end to charging deserts with an amazing new t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store.
We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video, but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.